Welcome back. In this step, we're going to increase the complexity of what we've been doing a little, and we're going to be working on at least three different blueprints, I think, to get all of this working. So let's get stuck in. We're going to make it so that we need a key card to open our door. But first of all, we need to bring in the key card, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my meshes folder, right click, import, and then I'm going to find my key card, which is in the chapter three folder. So there it is. All of my settings should be fine because I haven't changed them since last time. So I'm not creating any materials. Collision should already be there, although we don't really need it because we're going to be using a collision sphere. You'll see, uh, but we can just click on import and then let's open it up. There it is. So this is what the key card looks like and we need to get some materials on it. There are three for this one and I will make my recommendations for which ones we should use. So this first material, I'm going to do Chrome, which just does down the bottom here. Then the next one, there's a blue material in here, which is this solid blue. I quite like that for this detail here. And then for this like key icon and the border, I like the gold color like that. We've got a little bit of metallic goodness going on there. So that is the key card imported and set up. So then we can save that and close it. And now we're going to need to turn that into a blueprint. So we're going to go into our blueprints folder, which is, where is it? There it is. We're going to right click and this one needs to be an actor just like the last one. So we're going to go blueprint class, actor, and then I'm going to call this one M underscore key card because that's a good name. It's descriptive. Oh, not M. Sorry. I'm going crazy. BP. It's not a material. It's a blueprint. Whew, that was a close one. OK, then we can open this guy up. And get to work. So we're going to need a mesh just like we did last time. So let's add a static mesh. There it is. We're going to call it. I'll just call it card. I don't want to have to type any more than I need to. And then the static mesh over here, I'm going to search for my key card. And we're good to go. OK, I would actually like this to spin on the spot so that it kind of looks like a collectible to the player. I think that's always a nice touch. So what we're also going to do is add a rotating movement like that. And we're just going to leave it called rotating movement. We don't need to do anything else. But over here on our rotation rate, so it's rotating kind of on the Z axis. It's 180. I think that's a bit too fast. So I'm just going to bring that down to about 100. And that should be good. Next, we need a way of knowing when the players overlapped with our key card. And for that one, we're going to use a sphere collision. So I'm going to click on add. And I'm just going to make sure I go to my key card self up here so that it doesn't become a child of the rotating movement. And then I'm going to type sphere. And then get the sphere collision. And you can see that it goes below our card, which I don't want. I want it to be at about the same height. So I'm going to bring this up. And then I'm just going to make it a bit bigger so that when our player overlaps it, it feels good. So that's it. We've got our sphere and our card. That's ready to go. And it should all spin nicely. OK, so what we need to do now is make it so that we can pick this up. So we're going to make sure we've got the sphere collision selected. Go into our event graph. We don't need any of these events. Get rid of them. And it's going to be an on component begin overlap on component begin. That didn't work. Let me make sure the spheres selected on component begin. There we go. Make sure you've got the right thing selected, otherwise it won't work. And then we need to check, is this the player? So we're going to come out of other actor. And we're going to cast to third person character. And then if that's true, we want to do something. So we need to destroy the actor. So what we're going to do is just go to destroy. Like that. And that should mean that whenever we overlap this particular mesh, it should get destroyed and look like it's been collected. So let's compile, save and give that a little test. So I'm going to drop it in my level. And I don't want it too close to my player. I need to be able to walk over to it, put it there. And then let's press play. So we can see it's spinning. It's doing what it needs to do there. And if I run up to it, it disappears. Perfect. The problem is 
The door will still open either way. There's nothing stopping the door from opening whether we do or don't have the key card. And we've got no way of the door knowing whether or not we have the key card. So we've got to put some more logic into this to have that all work together. But we're now close. We've got almost everything we need. However, oh, let me just get rid of that. There is one thing I do want to change. I just want to put a light above this key card because I want it to stand out as like a collectible, which I did forget. So we're going to go back into the viewport here. I'm going to add a spotlight. There it is. And then just going to oh, hang on, move the spotlight up above it. And then going to rotate the spotlight so it goes straight down. And then we're just going to make it kind of a yellow colored light. So it looks kind of goldeny, I guess. Click on OK. And then I just want to check that in my level. So yeah, you can see now that it's got a nice bit of gold light around it, which makes it look like it's important to the player. OK, so that's good. And then we're going to compile and save that. Perfect. Right. Now we need to have a way of knowing whether or not the player has picked up the card and then the door needs to know and it's a whole thing. So here's how we're going to do it. Go to your third person character blueprint. We need to have a variable that can either be true or false. Do they have the key? Yes is true. False is no. And that's going to happen down here. So under the variables section here, there's a little plus icon. I'm going to click on that. And we're just going to call it has key question mark has key. And by default, it's a Boolean. Booleans mean true or false, zero or one. That's kind of all they can be, which is perfect for this. We need to compile that and save it. And then by default, we want it to be false. So we could set it to true here by ticking this box, but we don't want to do that. We want it to be false. And when the player picks up the key card, we want to trigger that to become true. So that's what we'll do. So now that we have that variable there, we can go into our key card, into the event graph. And before we destroy the actor, what we're going to do, because we have already cast to the third person character, so now we can do stuff with that. So as the third person character, we're going to set has key. So I just started typing set has and then it will get this variable and then we're just going to connect up our logic like that and then what we're going to do is tick this box. We're going to say set it to true. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is compile and save that. Now what we need to do is also get the door to do a check before it opens. So we're going to go back to our door into the event graph. That's better. And so before it does any of this, so I'm just going to move this along here a little bit, get all of these. We want to find out, does the player actually have the conditions to open the door? So as the third person character blueprint, we're going to get has key. We don't need to set it now, we want to get it. We want to find out what it is. And we're going to do what's called a branch. And that basically is what we would call an if statement in other kinds of programming. So out of here, we're going to add a branch like that. And what that means is it will continue if something's true or it might do something else if it's false. And our condition is here, has key. So what we want to do is if that's true, like that, it's going to go on and open the door. However, if it's false, we want to tell the player that they need the key card. And we're going to use something called a print string for that. So let's put that in there. So out of false, we're going to type print string. And there it is, print string comes up. And then we're going to type in here what we want to show up. So we're going to put door locked, exclamation mark, key card required. Perfect. So now when we overlap this, it's going to do that check and it will only open the door if we have the key card. Let's see if that all works. So into our level. So I'm not going to get the key. I'm going to walk over to the door. 
and you can see the door is now not opening. Now it will do the closing animation because we've not set that up yet. We also need to set that up, but it won't open yet. So door locked key card required. So let's get the key card. That should now have set that has key to true. So now we walk over to the door and the door opens. Very successful. So what we need to do now is just make sure that we don't have any strange behavior going on when the door should not open uh, or when it should be closed when we walk away from it. So let's go back into our door blueprint and make that change. And it's actually just the same deal as before. So what we're going to say is we're just going to move this stuff down a little bit. I'm going to try if I can select it. And we only want this to happen if the player actually has the key card. So we're going to do a branch. And as the third person character, we're just going to get has key. If that's true, the door will be able to close again behind them. So it should stay locked either way. Now, in this case, I'm not going to add anything to false because I don't need it to do anything. It will just stop. It will do nothing if they don't have the key card. So let's compile, save and play. So we'll go up to the door. Door lock key card required. It now isn't being weird when we walk away from it. We can pick up the key card and then the door opens and we can run out and the level will reset. And what's good about resetting the level is it also resets your variables. So I now can't get out of the door again until I pick up the key card again. Hooray. Okay, we're almost done with this, but before we move on, there is one more thing that I want you to do because it's important. Blueprints can get incredibly messy. They can look like angry spaghetti. So we're gonna add some comments to our code. So what I'm going to do is just move that one down a little bit. I'm going to select everything that controls opening the door. And I'm also just going to tighten these up a little bit. Keeping this stuff neat can save a lot of heartache. Believe me, I speak from experience. So I'm going to select all of those. And then I'm going to press C on my keyboard, which adds a comment. And I'm just going to call this open door. Perfect. But then I'm going to go one further. And this section here, which is that one, that one, and yeah, well, just those two, I think. I'm going to add another comment and I'm just going to call this check has key, like that. And then I'm just finally going to neaten this up a touch. Like that. So now I know what every part of this is doing. And then I'll do the same down here. So I'm just going to neaten it up a little bit. Nice. We're going to add, I'm going to add the check house key first. And then select everything and close door. And we have now commented our logic. Hooray! Um, let me just extend that out a little bit. Perfect. And then we can put these guys together. We know what they're doing. Look at us doing proper game programming. It's like we know what we're doing and everything. Okay, so that does it for this step. Well done for making it through. Hopefully not getting too confusing too quickly, but feel free to go over it again to make sure it all makes sense if you are feeling a little bit lost. In the next step, we're going to add an obstacle, which is going to be some fire that will add damage to the player when they stand in it. So I will see you in the next step for that. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.